Hey everyone, Chris here, the RC Geek, coming to you from the shop today, and we are talking about the Flightline RC TA152. Now this is a model that I picked up late last year, and I've just kind of stored it in the box for a rainy day. Well, that rainy day came and I uh, put it together, and this is really a nice looking little model. It's a really unique subject, you know, the TA152 was a high altitude uh, version of the Falk Wolf design, that evolution, there are many, many different versions. Uh, personally, my favorite Focke-Wulf is the D9, and so this is kind of an iteration upon that, designed for high speed, high altitude. Came late in the war, so not, not too effective, but uh, I think only about 25 or so were ultimately built, but it was extremely capable in what it was designed for. The model itself, I, I did a few modifications, uh, nothing too major, but you know, most notably I did some paint work. Uh, some weathering and then I modified the landing gear to give it a more scale look uh, when they're in the down position. So in terms of the assembly itself, uh, it, it assembles extremely quickly. Uh, you basically just glue the wings together, bolt those on, bolt the horizontal stabilizers on, and that's it. From there, install your receiver. I'm using an AR620 receiver in the model uh, and works fantastically. Now in terms of the modifications that I did uh, with respect to the landing gear I simply just glued a 1 32nd inch plywood uh, shim into the base of the retract so when the pivot block comes into the down position it doesn't actually fully extend it stops in a part uh, extended position uh, and so it gives that cant angle that I was looking for and actually it removed any kind of slop uh, that the retracts had in that down position. They're extremely tight now. From there, once I had that angle set, uh, I just bent the wheel axles so that way the wheels were straight perpendicular to the ground just like the real one. Uh, and that was pretty much it. It was a really easy mod to do. So then to finish it all off, a friend of mine actually gave me a set of tires for the Park Zone Falk Wolf put those on and it totally completed the look uh, because they're a little bit bigger, they look more scale, uh, and so that, that was real, a really nice kind of icing on the cake with respect to the gear. Now on the paint work, I knew straight away when I bought this I wanted to model Green 9, uh, and so all of the color profiles that I have seen of that airplane that had a solid green nose, and, and actually I came across a plastic model that a guy had built uh, and so I kind of wanted to mimic what he had done. So there were some unpainted panels on the underside. Uh, so I masked that off with frog tape, uh, painted that silver, and then on the nose, I masked that off uh, with frog tape as well, and then painted that with Tamiya AS14 olive green spray paint. From there, I did additional modeling work. Uh, there wasn't really any modeling on the vertical tail, so I added a little bit there. So I took the Tamiya AS23 light green and the AS24 dark green and uh, sprayed those into a paper cup and then just sprayed each through the airbrush uh, to add a little bit more modeling onto the airplane. Now in the process, I ended up painting the yellow and red band on the tail. Uh, I attempted to use the included markings, but it just wasn't going to work. So masked that off with frog tape, painted it white, then painted the yellow with Rust-Oleum yellow, and then masked off for the red, and then painted that with Rust-Oleum red. The markings themselves are also kind of almost like a vinyl type sticker. Uh, they, they don't have any kind of carrier film around them, which is great. So they look really convincing and scale like painted on markings. And then from there, I did a full weathering workup. Now, all of the weathering that I did is pretty much the same as I've shown in my Warbird weathering video. Uh, there is one addition here. Since this is the stock paint job, I didn't do any filler work into the panel lines. Uh, and so, to bring out and dirty up the panel lines, I did a wash with raw umber acrylic pigment. Uh, the brand is Folk Art. I thinned it down with water and Windex, sprayed it through the airbrush over the entire airplane on all of the panel lines, then wiped it off in the direction of the airflow. Uh, and so what happens is that wash collects into the panel lines and kind of gives it a dirty look. And then from there, it stains and oil streaking with uh, the unthinned raw umber acrylic pigment and again just dab it on with a paintbrush wipe it off in the direction of the airflow with a paper towel and some Tamiya acrylic thinner 
Uh, and then to finish it all off, I did uh, airbrush shading with black over all of the panel lines and then did the exhaust work as well. And I used black there and I used a little bit of gold gray to give it that kind of hot deposits that you see on, on many of these warbirds. For the white stripe on the spinner, that is also painted as well, just masked it off with some 3M fine line tape uh, and then painted the white. That decal that they provide for you doesn't work that great. So I just, it was way easier to just paint it. Uh, and so that was pretty much it on the paintwork. I sprayed a final clear coat over it once all of the, the paintwork was done. I just used the Rust-Oleum 2 times matte clear. So that evens it all out. It's really important to do that when you do this weathering type of work. The, the model altogether it looks fantastic even without the paintwork, although that really did kind of transform the look for me uh, on the airplane. They've characterized the shape perfectly, the paintwork, they've got accurate colors, it's well painted, it's well finished, uh, and so yeah, I really like the airplane quite a bit. Now with respect to flying the airplane and the setup and all of that, the recommended CG in the manual is perfect. Uh, that is 72 millimeters as measured from the wing root leading edge aft, and that coincides just behind that uh, first span-wise uh, panel line that's in the wing. If you set your fingers there, lift up the airplane upside down, uh, and CG it there with it about level, it's perfect. I'm running a Smart 4S 3200 pack in the airplane. Uh, it flies fantastically on four cells. My timer's set to five minutes. Basically, the, the front of that pack is parallel with the wood mounting plate that is in the battery area. Now, with respect to the controls, uh, the airplane is pretty sensitive on the controls, so you don't need a whole lot of rates on it uh, for the elevator. Eight millimeters up and down with 10% expo. For the aileron, seven millimeters up and down with 5% expo. For the rudder, 15 millimeters left to right and no expo at all there. And then for the flaps, 10 millimeters mid and 25 millimeters at full, and there's no elevator mix required whatsoever. Flying the airplane, guys, I was pleasantly surprised by this one. You know, you've got this really high aspect ratio wing, which can be problematic if it's not designed well. Well, this airplane is extremely forgiving to fly. It's quick on four cells. Um, it locks in true. It does nice big vertical maneuvers, tracks straight through the rolling maneuvers. It's really a fantastic flying airplane. It's been a lot of fun. And the one thing that I really noticed is it's extremely forgiving on the landings too. That tail does want to fly in the landing ground roll. Uh, and so you are going to have to progressively hold more and more elevator to kind of keep that nose from going too far forward on you. But it looks great when you see the tail flying as it slows down uh, in the landing ground roll. One thing to be aware of on the takeoffs for this airplane, this is a lightweight airframe. If you're carrying too much elevator initially, it will lift off prematurely on you and it will snap. So my recommendation is to slowly apply throttle, let the elevator come up and read and react to the model as necessary, okay? You don't wanna be holding up elevator in the takeoff roll if you don't have to because you could run into problems because just the airplane is just so light, it'll lift off prematurely on you if you're not ready for it. So just keep that in mind. I've been having a lot of fun with this model. I love how it looks in the air. Uh, it just grooves along beautifully uh, and will do any number of scale aerobatics and it's, it's really a fantastic flying airplane. So let's take this out to the field, uh, show you guys what it can do, uh, and then we'll come back and we'll wrap this up.
right, guys, so there we have the Flightline RC TA-152. Uh, you know, this is a fantastic looking airplane. With a few paint mods, it looks even better. Uh, and it's a great flyer. Uh, four cells, I definitely recommend the four cells. It's quick uh, and it's got great vertical and it's really a lot of fun. And it doesn't take much to take, you know, a nice looking model to look even better. Uh, you know, with some paint mods and some additional work on the landing gear, um, it's really completely transforms the looks of the model. Uh, and so, yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to follow along on social media at the RC Geek. Subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you at the field. Mm -hmm.